about an hour with everyone. So thank you so much for choosing the session. We know you that you had choices today. So welcome to our session on Work With Purpose, a recruitment campaign for child welfare. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Um, we're gonna start with a poll. We wanna um, keep saying hi in the chat. We wanna know where you all are joining us from, but we'd also love to get a better sense of who's in the room. So there, uh, our great colleague, Lindsay, has just launched the poll for us just asking you to fill that out, at, uh, responding about what your primary role is, and then make sure you scroll down to see the second question, which is really around what type of organization um, you work for. And so if you could go ahead and fill that poll out, if you are um, one of those that has an other, go ahead and put that in the chat. We'd love to get a good sense. We've got Ted Ted, who's a TA provider. We've got more training in TA, wonderful. So please go ahead and... Um, fill out the poll. I think we'll leave it open for just a little bit longer just to get a sense of who's in the room with us. It helps us be able to tailor our, our conversation with you um, to your roles and to the types of organizations that you're joining from. We've got consultants and training and development. Wonderful. Great. Um, so why don't we, looks like we've got the majority of folks have responded to the poll. Why don't we go ahead and close the poll and we'll share the results. And so it looks like the vast majority or the majority, I guess we got 36%, it's not the majority, I guess, a third of managers and supervisors, we have a third who are others. And then we've got some senior leaders and direct service professionals and advocates, great. And then most folks are joining 75% from state and county child welfare. Okay, that's really good to know. We've got a few from our tribal child welfare partners, some private nonprofits, a few independent consultants, and then a bunch of others who are um, throwing that in the chat. So great. Thank you all so much for being here with us. Um, so I am Sharon Kolar. I am with the National Child Welfare Workforce Institute, and I am the link director, which really just means I have the great honor and privilege to um, learn everything about workforce development and child welfare and try to figure out ways to get that information to all of you. And I'm here with my colleague, Michelle Clinch, who is our national campaign manager. And you may notice that our backgrounds are very similar. <laughs> We're actually sitting right next to each other. We were in Crystal City, Virginia this week for some meetings with our advisory board and our team. And so we have this great honor to be actually in the same room together, which is kind of fun when we're usually all the way across the country from each other. So we're happy to be here. We're happy you're here with us. And we have um, some really fun things we think to share with you around recruitment. So to start, we just wanted to um, provide just a little bit of context for this conversation today. We uh, at the National Child Welfare Workforce Institute, what feels like many years ago, we developed this workforce development framework. And I think what you know, we're hearing throughout this Child Welfare Virtual Expo around workforce is that, and what we've known through all the research and the conversations we've had with all of you around the country, is that workforce development requires a really comprehensive approach, right? Like recruitment is one piece. The piece we're gonna to talk to you about today is how do we do a better job of bringing people to the door of our organizations and really invite them in to think about working with us. Um, but once they get there, there's a whole host of things that we need to be thinking about as far as making sure that we're in a welcoming environment, that we're in a learning environment, that we're in a place where people are gonna be have opportunities for professional development, they're going to get support to do um, improve their practice and really serve families well. And so what we want to say is that this recruitment piece we're going to talk about today is just a small piece, but really we want, we hope that you're all thinking about how are you creating a good environment and working through developing and, and enacting change within your organization so that the environment that people come to is an environment where we are um, creating healthy environments for our workforce so that we're doing um, really great work with families so that they're every, all of us are thriving. So that's our workforce development framework. We're gonna talk about recruitment, which is again, just a small piece. And we're gonna talk about a recruitment campaign. So th today we have, again, just under an hour now, uh, we're gonna talk about how this campaign was developed, what the campaign includes, how you can use this campaign, and then get some ideas from you about what types of support you might need if, um, you're thinking about actually using this campaign. Okay, so we're gonna start with how the campaign was developed. Uh, so, you know, we've done a lot of listening and what we're hearing across the country is that we're really struggling to bring people in to apply for positions in child welfare. 
And so what we did was, we, you know, we listened to, to folks across the country and our goal with this campaign is one, to enhance the recruitment efforts that you're already doing. We know many of you are going to job fairs, you're talking to your university partners, you're doing a number of different things to try to let people know about these exciting opportunities you have in your organization. But you don't often have um, the tools to really research what language works. You don't have the capacity to create high quality advertisements. And you're just looking for, uh, for, for turnkey tools and assets, things that you can just take to your organization and implement right away. And so our goals were to enhance your efforts, to create tools and assets that we think you can just add your name and, your, and put your, your flavor on and then um, be able to use those for, for advertising and for bringing people in. And then what we also heard was that, you know, folks want to know more about the child welfare profession. What does it actually look like to work in child welfare? And so we've given, we're, one of our goals in this campaign was also to provide you with some language to be able to talk with your community partners, talk with pr prospective applicants about what this exciting work really looks like. So with that, I am now going to pass things over to Michelle, who's going to start talking to you about the research that we did to develop this campaign, what we've learned, and then really sh the, the big reveal will be sharing all the assets that we have to share with you. So I am going to pass things over to Michelle. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> so funny to be in the same room together. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're so glad you could be here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, as Sharon said, my name's Michelle, and um, we're going to talk through some of the research that we did. So I think the first thing we did was we, you know, really interviewed a lot of people. We had, we interviewed and surveyed and did focus groups with current and former child welfare professionals. And we did focus groups with diverse populations from important demographic groups, those that we really would love to apply for uh, positions in child welfare. So that are that included those people who have, are in their early career, those with lived experience. Uh, we spoke with a Native American uh, focus group, and then of course, uh, current child welfare professionals. And um, we tested three concepts with these groups to see like what really resonated. And I'm going to share that that concept with you in just a minute, but I wanted to tell you what we learned because I thought it was fascinating. Uh, we learned that you have to speak about the special passion we have for this work. You know, we're all very passionate. It's so fun to be in a room with child welfare professionals because they are so um, passionate about what they're doing and the services that they're providing and the support. So. Uh, that was important to all of the audiences across the board. They wanted to learn about day-to-day -day work. Like, what is it like to be a child welfare professional? What am I going to do each day? Um, and a little bit more about that, you know, one of the things that seemed to resonate was that there's so much diversity in your day. Like, you know, one day you'll be doing one thing, another day you'll be doing another. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, and that really resonated people like that idea. Um, they wanted to, us to emphasize that it's a collaborative team-based approach to su best support families and workloads. They didn't want a job where they were the sole person um, to be able to do that. Hold on just one minute. Uh, we just see one comment in the chat that's saying that they can't see Michelle or her slides. Could you just, um, could folks just confirm that you see them in the chat? Yeah, okay. Looks like okay, everybody okay. else All right, we're good. All right. <laughs> we'll Sorry. Going. Sorry, I stopped right in the middle, but I was like, wait, we need to make sure they're, they're good to go. Okay. They wanted us to reveal the stories of people that were really doing the work through testimonials, and they wanted to know what their career opportunities were once they were in child welfare. Yeah. So the the campaign, um, you'll notice the graphics that are uh, on the screen, depending on what asset you're looking at, some of those are uh, have motion to them. What I thought was so cool was that it really resonated against uh, across all ages and demographics. They love these uh, this little add on to 
a standard image. And so the campaign's goal is really to attract new and diverse applicants to fill those cri critical vacancies and to drive change within child welfare. So with that, we are being very transparent about the need for change and improvements. I think that's really important to be honest with our future workforce and highlight that this is challenging yet really rewarding work. So what's included? This is just a few of the images that showcase um, different aspects of the campaign. And then we can go into the next slide and you can see what the digital toolkit has to offer. Um, so feel free to shoot, uh, use your QR camera uh, to grab that link. It's also on the homepage of our website. And, um, and Sharon's just added it into the webinar chat. So that's fantastic. So this just shows you, and I, I wanna take a second to just say like, what is a toolkit? Like, do we need, an, you know, there's a lot of toolkits out there. So this isn't telling you all the things that you ever wanted to know about recruitment. It really just summarizes the research that we learned, the language that resonates um, with our audiences and um, gave you some guidance that way on how to use the assets. So with that, here's the toolkit. So we explain why we went with the Work With Purpose campaign, that it's research-driven, tone and words that you can use in your own um, campaign messaging, and then how to use the campaign online, and then all of the assets you'll be able to dr download directly from the toolkit. So we are so excited to show you the campaign video. So here we go. Now hiring, people who see potential within every child, those who see the strength within every family, change makers drawn to work with purpose. By working in child welfare, you're working with your community to keep families together. You're working with purpose. Apply today. that. So this campaign was the one campaign that really worked no matter what age you were, um, what demographic you were, you came from, this really resonated with everyone. So this video can be downloaded and used on your website. Um, it can be used on social media. So there's lots of different opportunities for using the campaign video. The next are the social graphics. So this is an example. Um, all of this is customizable. So you can put your own organization in. You can tweak the language if that, what, that's what works with you. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about how to do that effectively in a minute. And then you can put um, where it says youragency.gov. You're going to want to put your uh, where your the web page where your jobs are listed. And then apply now, and it's your organization. Um, so we're excited to share that with you. And we'll show you one more. Um, here's another one. Uh, now hiring change makers who believe in keeping families together, work with, chil with child welfare. So this is so powerful and really resonated with a lot of different people. Um, and so we wanted to make sure you got to see this one again. This can, this can work if you're in social services, you can figure out like if you have a process for how you're getting, how you do hiring, you can provide that website for how to go through that process, right? So that's really fantastic. Um, and so we wanted to share this with you and we're, you're gonna get to hear some of the initial data, which I think is so fun. So uh, we ran this campaign in uh, a county and a state and we found that in the state, this version of the social graphic along with the one previous worked equally as well. And then in the county that we ran it in, the first one ran um, was better well received and the change, change maker one 
wasn't as well received. Now, I want to be really clear with you, both over over the moon. They worked great. They were way better than any average um, recruitment ad. So you can really use both and feel really confident. Stacy, I wish I could tell you the county and state, but I did not ask per permission, but you can talk to us offline and we can ask them um, if we can tell you. So <laughs> definitely get in touch with us. But so I think that that just tells you, you can use both confidently. They both were achieved um, higher benchmarks than the average uh, recruitment ad, but it's something that you're going to want to think about as you're, if you're running ads um, on social media to take a look at your own statistics and say, what is really working within my community, right? So we want to make sure that that really works. Um, let's take a look at one more. And this is the version that we're testing with one of our tribes. And um, so it says, now hiring those who want to help families heal, work with purpose for tribal child welfare. And we don't have any initial data on this, but we will soon. And we can't wait to share it with you. Um, but we wanted to make sure that whatever we were providing you, we gave you the very best and you could 100% use it, knowing um, that it's going to resonate um, across uh, generations and demographics. So I want to tell you a little bit more about the data. Um, so uh, because I want to make sure you understand that, like, we're still learning, but I want to tell you what we do know because it's really exciting. So for the county, we ran two weeks of uh, advertisements. And while we don't have the statistics for their website yet, they got 21 applications for caseworkers and 20 of those people were qualified. Like, that's that's amazing, right? They um, were looking for caseworkers who spoke Bengali and 12 applicants, 12 applicants, like that's incredible. Um, they also needed Arabic um, case, uh, speak, case workers that spoke Arabic and they got four applicants. I just really think that that is really powerful data. And again, we're going to just keep um, working through that data and sharing that with you so that you can really uh know what you're um, going to be utilizing is proven. I want to talk to you a little bit about the state that we worked with. So in two weeks, it drove 5,004 users to their career landing page. Like, wow, that is incredible. It also increased their organic um, Google searches. So that means somebody just went to Google and said, child welfare, you know, in my state. And what they what they found was those also were driven up. So even if they don't grab your website address, they're going to find you. And that the their their engagement was even longer on their websites. And then one other little tidbit that I, I thought was really interesting because I'm a social media nerd. So for those of you who love social media and how to use it, um, the LinkedIn ads drove the most traffic. So of those 5,004 users, 1,358 came from LinkedIn. So I think that that's really helpful. Like if you're really on a tight budget, like where do you want to spend your money? That can really help with some of that. Okay. So I just wanted to share that with you. One of the other things that I'd like to say about the social graphics is it's a wonderful opportunity to really use free to post these free. Uh, when we did the assessment, I was really shocked at how many organizations are not posting their open positions on their own social media. So if you're doing that, kudos to you because you're a, a, um, above the curb, curve. And if you aren't doing that quite yet, please know that this gives you a wonderful opportunity to really up your recruitment and let individuals in your community know that you're hired. Okay, and then uh, we also developed a microsite. Now, the microsite is meant to be a window into child welfare profession. It's really meant to leverage the campaign language and assets. It shares testimonials, and it answers the questions that participants really wanted to know from our focus groups. Who do we need in child welfare? 
What do child welfare professionals do? What career paths are there? And how do they fit into the profession? So those were the big key things. And while we're going to be making sure to promote child welfare as a profession on our end, one of the things that you can do on your end is take a look at it. And I always say, you know, borrow and steal language that you um, can use to really take your website up to the next level, right? And really speak to those core values that this campaign really um, promotes. Okay, so I mentioned that the ads were performed performing significantly above benchmarks. The other thing I want to tell you is it's really important to have a uh, call to action, um, right? And so what we found is we ran two different versions. The apply now performs better than the learn more. Again, learn more was still above the benchmarks for the standard recruitment, app, but the apply now was really the winner winner. So if you can choose between which one, uh, you know, we're at this early date, we're recommending apply now and it goes to your career landing page. Um, but the learn more is certainly going to also help you to really promote this opportunity um, and this profession. Here's that little note about the change makers version didn't perform as well in the one market, um, but responded positively in another market. So it's just a matter of uh, trying to figure out which piece is going to work best for you. Okay, so some of the other stuff I really wanted to make sure um, let you know is that one of the things we learned is it's really important to use the campaign arc words. So when you're using this for your own purposes, those overarching messages are work with families, work with communities, work with purpose, like any way that you can build into that, that is really fantastic and helpful. The other thing that is really going to lead people to want to apply are pointing out those key qualities for a good candidate, okay? And that's because this language resonates with them and they're wanting to know that you're looking for someone like them. And so here's a great opportunity to build some of these words and this language into your recruitment um, posts and how you put maybe the language you put in your job descriptions, however you decide to do that. So drawn to work with purpose kind of goes back to our overall theme, believe in keeping families together, see strength within every family, potential within every child. You're willing to sit and listen. You want to help families heal and you work from heart. So um, those are really great attributes that you can put into your job requirements um, that really foregrounds that passion, empathy, and patience, uh, you know, those core values that we're looking for. And then just making sure to strike a balance between the desires and mindsets of potential applicants and the demands of the job itself, right? Remember when we said you, you got to be like transparent and authentic. So using some of those words around committed, strengths finder, team base again, because um, especially our younger focus group members, they really wanted to know that they were going to be supported once they were in this position. So that really, really helped. Um, supportive partner, collaborator, change maker. Uh, uh, those words are all really great ones to use. So how do you use it? Okay, so one of the things I really wanted to do was be, you know, as we were putting this together, be intentional about like explaining, like if you've never placed an ad on social media, that's okay, because we walk you through it in the toolkit. And of course, we're going to share our contact information. You can get in touch with us. We could do a little bit of technical assistance around that too. So I think the things that um, you could utilize right now is look at your website's existing language and update it to define the career opportunities um, for applicants based on campaign messaging. That was really another uh, really aha that we saw when we were doing our initial research was that a lot of job landing pages don't talk about like why you should want to work in child welfare and um, the reasons for that and how the profession is changing, um, how we support and um, lift up our families and our children. So definitely take a look at that. Like once you use the ad to get to your page, does it, um, does it capture their attention? 
does it make them want to apply? I already, recommend, I already did some other uh, recommendations earlier. I mentioned the, to identify a clear call to action for those recruits. That's really important. We talked about using campaign materials on your social media. That's a huge opportunity if you haven't already been taking advantage of that free opportunity. And then use the campaign materials in your recruitment advertising. What kind of little budget can you come up with to see? Um, especially with social media, it very much is to some extent, um, if you will, a pay to play kind of, you know, to get um, a number of people to see your ad so that you can get, you can attract the right candidate. So um, definitely consider ways that you could do that. Again, uh, there's a QR code um, on, on the screen that you can use to link to it. I think um, Sharon sh shared Bitly's in the webinar chat, and then she's sharing the longer links just in case those get blocked by you. Um, sometimes we see with the longer links, then they, they do a line break, and so those don't work. So hopefully you found one of those links work for you. And what if you need support? Uh, now you know Sharon and I. So uh, let's talk about that. Sharon? Great. Thanks, Michelle. And thanks, everyone, for your feedback in the chat. It's really great seeing the responses and the questions. Um, we just really appreciate knowing that some of this is resonating with you and hearing what some of your questions are. So again, we're trying to put the full links in the, in the chat. Um, we understand there's been some blocks for some of them and we're doing our best here. So uh, we love these live virtual events. And um, again, also we're in our booth all day today. So if you want to chat with us after this for support, if you um, have questions about how to access the materials or how to use the materials, we will be in our Sweevy booth um, all day. So come visit us there after the session if you want to continue this conversation. Um, so we're going to actually launch a poll in terms of this question about support. Um, you know, as Michelle alluded to earlier, as we've done some of the research and assessments in creating this campaign, we've seen a number of different um, challenges that folks are having as far as making sure they have direct links to jobs on their websites. I know with civil service and a number of other challenges that, that come up, um, folks don't always have the ability to change their websites easily. We know how government systems can create barriers and challenges. And so we'd love to know what um, types of support would be helpful to you for um, getting this um, utilized, right? Like the, all of these assets are free. There was a question earlier in the Q&A asking, um, everything's already paid for with your tax dollars. So we hope that you'll use these and customize these. Um, and then I think Lindsay's going to launch our poll number two, which is uh, what types of support will help you to use this campaign? And so um, it looks like she may have set this up as a single choice. So if you want to just pick one of those and put, a, if you have a, if you, your top choice, I guess, put your top choice in the chat. And if um, other of these sound like they would be helpful to you as well, please go ahead and put those in the chat and we will harness, um, we'll harness those requests for support as well. Um, again, we, this is actually an opportunity for us to hear from you about what things would be helpful for you um, in, as far as using this. So I see from Leslie in the chat that getting assistance from their market, their marketing team would be one area of support needed approval from human resources. Absolutely. Um, these assets are definitely things that could, um, that require a team approach, right? In, as far as using them. So what other, we have, um, Lots of time here. We also can provide you all with an opportunity for a break if that's needed. We would love to hear your additional questions and other ideas around types of support that you would want moving into the future. Um, so I do see a question here about if any of this is specifically geared towards millennials and Gen Zs. And what I would say is that we did, as Michelle, I think alluded to in the beginning, we did do some focus group work with um, folks that are in those in those generations and that was some, that did contribute to our development of this campaign although it wasn't um, there isn't like a specific piece of this that I could say I could point out <laughs> that was geared specifically towards Millennials and Gen Z we did listen we did get their feedback about what would work for them and what they were looking for in an advertisement campaign but um, I wouldn't say that there's this piece specifically geared towards them I don't know Michelle if you would add anything to that I would just say that you know, the, the ads, 
do work across all generations. So that is the advantage that it works um, for everyone. The graphics, though, with the heart and the movement of that, that really does work for the millennials and Gen Zs. That was one of their biggest comments was that they love the graphics of that piece. They loved that it was a real image. And then there, there had this aspect of that too. So um, it does really resonate with that group. But like we said, I mean, the benefit is you can use this campaign no matter who you're trying to recruit um, because it's it's meant to target all um, audiences uh, and, you know, candidate types. You know, as we said earlier, you know, uh, Bengali, Arabic, I think that shows you right there that it, it's working across um, diverse populations, which I think is a huge asset. One other thing I wanted to say is that we're still testing. Uh, and so there will be a second version of this toolkit that will come out mid-October that will have additional assets that we've been able to test. Again, we want to make sure that you have assets that work. And so then there will be um, a larger toolkit that will replace this one. And so you'll have even more assets. And then at that time, we'll probably do another webinar. So you can always join Nikwi's uh, web, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, newsletter uh, email uh, so that then you can be notified when we're ready to talk to you about those secondary um, assets that we're going to be adding and also to share even more about what we learn about the data that we're still collecting. All right, thanks, Michelle. And I see um, Ted Ted's talking about using this and the resources for um, recruiting lived experience for efforts for recruiting people with lived experience. Absolutely. Um, I see some comments too about the in, the time it's going to take to sort of build the internal capacity. And you know, looking at the poll, it's it's really great. It's interesting to see that some folks are, we have about twenty eight percent of the people in the room saying that they need technical support for running a campaign, and that's definitely something a need that we've seen. Um, and hope to have an opportunity to be able to build some additional supports for the for that um the peer support piece also looks like it's um one of our top our top responses and that's something also that um, we're looking at um ways that nick we can do that also the, the capacity building centers have peer groups and we're looking at working with them to figure out how can we um, talk about this campaign and provide additional support so that all the peer groups that are happening across the country can also um, continue to use, you know be able to use this and have and continue to have conversations about recruitment as a whole again like this campaign is a piece of that but we know that there's much there's much more to, to work around um, as far as recruitment and select and the selection process and all of those um those pieces so Thank you for those comments and questions. Um, I'm trying to sort of scroll through the chat and see what else is here. If you have other questions or comments, please keep them coming. So I see a comment from Ryan Anderson about the best way to explain in 30 seconds or less what we do for in-person interactions. We, we haven't found a way to do it in 30 seconds, but what we have done is we have provided some resources to talk about um, what we do as child welfare workers, as professionals, and all of those assets are available on nikwi.org. And so there's like a, a really great one that explains, you know, what you might be doing day to day. Um, I'll go grab that link and put it in the chat for you if Sharon doesn't beat me to it. Um, but there's definitely some additional assets uh, that you'll want to access to help with that. Great. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, as I'm sharing my screen, it's hard for me to grab links. So I'm glad. So happily to have Michelle do that piece for us. Um, I see also a question about thoughts around recruiting upstream, such as at schools of social work, that at least less people are being interested in the child welfare field um, through our university partnerships as well. And, um, you know, we really, one of the conversations we've been having is how could folks actually at the schools of social work and in our Title IV programs and our other university um, programs that are looking to hire folks um, and encourage folks to move into this, this uh, profession. So. Uh, we are going to be actually talking with some folks at um, the Council for Social Work Education conference about uh, these tools and assets. Um, we also have been thinking about um, in our targeting. So one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at how do we 
decide the, the places that we're going to target our ads. So one of the things that we're we've um, we're testing with our sites is testing actual geocaching our ads so that in, on social media or on organic ads that actually targets the mile radius around some of our schools of social work or our HBCUs or our tribal colleges or you know other folks that are that have um, educational programs that are. Uh, specific to that would bring in great people to do this work right like the university partners is one piece our people with lived experience is another is another area of work um, and another area of folks that we would love to bring into this profession so um, that is my answer to that Keisha thank you for the question um, let's see. other questions comments reflections on this I do see a question um, in our Q&A that's talking about um, you know that many of the clients in in, in some of these uh, ads are uh, portrayed as uh, Black, Indigenous, or people of color, and so try you know what is our balance around making sure that diversity is key, but also not furthering some stereotypes and and biases. And that is something that I will tell you we've had deep conversations. Michelle and I and our team that came up with these ads, the Children's our folks and our partners at the Children's Bureau. It's a really, um, it's a challenging question, right? Like we wanna make sure that we're showing all types of folks in all of these, both in the, the worker role as well as the families we're serving and really trying to do our best to, to address that um, in a way that really makes sense and does not um, continue to perpetuate stereotypes, um, especially of our client population, you know, and the families that we're really serving. And um, it is a variety of folks. And so thank you for that question. It is something that we've, um, really been thinking hard about and how can we as we if we have opportunities to create additional ads how can we continue to highlight different groups of people both in the worker uh, role as well as in our in the families um so i appreciate it. i see laura put a comment in the chat that um, the balance of diversity is a challenge and yes it is laura thank you um, and yes it's definitely been uh, lots of deep conversations about how do we language all of this how do we really be respectful to the work that that we're trying to do the vision that we all have for this work the heart that we bring to this work and do that in a way that is realistic I, again there was a question earlier around how do we do this in a way that um doesn't make people look at this and think oh well everything's pretty and wonderful and then they get into the job and they realize um, how really how challenging this is so trying to figure out ways that we balance all of that and also that we um really continue to have these conversations in our organizations with our communities that we're not that this is just one piece again and that we're really building our partnerships and we're th we're talking we're having deep you know heartfelt conversations with each other about what this work looks like what it could look like how can we change our systems change our organizations in a way that really be best serves families i think we heard that call from asia as well as rebecca earlier this morning um, and that I think, you know, from all the conversations I've, I've had with folks working in this profession, that's what we're all looking for, right, is how can we serve families well and um, do the best to improve our organizations in this process. And so, again, um, I really appreciate all the comments I'm seeing. If there's additional um, questions, I see um, April's asking if it would be uh, useful in recruiting supervisory roles or positions within child welfare. It's worth a test, right? We haven't tested that. I think we would love for you to try that out and let us know how it goes um, and see if it, is, if it is effective. I think the language that Michelle was showing earlier, I can actually go back to that slide. Where was that slide where we talked about the different, the ways that we talk here about um, the qualities that we're looking for, how do we talk about potential applicants, what are some of the words that we use, like change maker, collabor collaborator, partner, those are all things that also fit for supervisory roles and positions, right? So some of this is really thinking about how are we talking about the work that we do? How are we talking about it internally? Not just how are we messaging it to folks outside of our, our organizations and systems, but how are we talking about what we do with each other is also really important. Um, and so this may give you a few ideas of how to do that. Um, internally as, as we think about promotions internally um, so thanks for that question april yeah i april i would just second what sharon said that it really is a values-based campaign and so you know i think it can go across um ages and a career you know where they're at in their career whether because we did interview people for, who were just starting out in their career versus those who are have been in child welfare for 30 years so um i think it I can work as uh sharon said we hope you test it and you let us know um if that worked and i wanted to speak to eve a little bit about um have we received any questions about the negative images of child welfare work now Sharon might have a different perspective. So we'll just see right now because you've asked us this question. But 
One of the things that I thought was really interesting about the focus group with the early career and those with lived experience was that they didn't talk about child welfare the way that we talk about child welfare, those who've been involved in it for a really long time. So what we heard from them was, ooh, that's really hard work. That's really, really hard work. So they didn't speak about it from like, oh, you know, those same negative perceptions that we often talk about internally. They really talked about like, oh yeah, I know people, they're caseworkers. And that's like a really, really hard job. And so I think that's where you really lean into that team-based approach and really sharing with people how you're going to support them once they're in the role. And I think that's um, an important piece. And you know, as Sharon led with from the very beginning, this is just one component of our workforce development framework. And so organizational health and all of those pieces that you're all putting in place, I noticed a lot of you are trainers um, that that support is also going to need to be there as well. So it's going to be, um, it's going to take a, it, you know, you're going to have to go across um, different aspects of the WDF to really get to, okay, we recruited them. Now, how do we retain them? How do we support them? How are they healthy? How is their mental health, their well-being? Um, those are all going to be aspects that we'll have to address in order to have a healthy workforce. I think what I would add to that, too, is that what we've seen also a number of organizations that are doing this well is that they're on their recruitment, like they create a recruitment web page that talks about what are the supports you're like that describe the profession, but then also talk about so what are the supports you're going to get. So we have our microsite that has some of the things about training and professional development and career pathways and all of those things, but having those be specific to your organization so that people can see, oh, it provides flexible work schedules. It's a team-based, as Michelle said, a team-based environment. You'll receive professional development or maybe coaching or mentoring, whatever those, those other pieces are that your organization is providing. You want to be upfront about what those are, as well as the, I mean, I think you know, there was a question earlier about what, what's the realistic job preview or what's the actual you know, explanation about the challenges, but then also what are the supports, right? So balancing that as we think about what do we put on, what are we, what are we putting out there and how are we talking about what our opportunities are uh, to, to folks? And I see uh, Christy saying that these are just reinforcing how inadequate some of our recruitment efforts are. And yes, I mean, this is a great opportunity, right? So what we see is that hopefully this is an opportunity for folks to create a small work group in your organization that includes HR, that includes supervisors and managers and, and people working directly with families to think about how, what are the supports that are working? How are we talking about our profession again, both internally and with external partners? And how can we create a front facing one, pa one page on our website that really talks about the important work that we do, the supports that we get, and then how do we enter into this into this profession? We um, had a really great conversation with our advisory board yesterday. And one of the one of the comments there was also, how do we talk about so someone sees an ad like this and they they call, they let's say they call. I mean, we don't call a lot of people anymore, but if we, they call the, aid, the organization, they say they're interested in a position. Who's answering the phone? Who's answering the questions? How is how long is the process for um completing an application and then hearing something about whether you have an interview or not, right? So like all of those things really show us, um, show some a potential applicant about the, the culture of our organization. And so really thinking about all of those pieces. And we, um, you know, we found a lot of success using implementation and action teams where there's folks from across an organization who come together and really think about what are all these workforce efforts and recruitment again, being one piece of that. So thank you for that comment, Christine. Yeah, and I would add that, um... One of the things that we're that we've learned through our years is just try little things. Don't get overwhelmed by how big it is. Yes, we agree. There's a lot of room for improvement, but like do that plan, do you study act, you know, take one job description and one uh, recruitment ad that you're going to be putting out, tweak the language, see if you move up some of the stuff that Sharon talked about, about, you know, how you, you get trained, ongoing training and different pieces like that. Rework that and just see, did you get more average, um, more applicants than you did the previous time? Okay. What else can we tweak about that? So I, I would just say to you, just keep making small improvements. And in the end, you will get um, to a better place. And so uh, I don't want you to get overwhelmed by what's what's here. There's um, a lot of really cool, wonderful things that you can do in your organization to just move you forward. Yeah. 
I'll see a question from Ryan about whether there are any internal resources or campaigns that we've seen uh, be successful that balance both the realistic with the positive successes. Um, I would love if there's folks in the room who have seen those great examples. If you want to link to any of those, the um, the gateway has links to realistic job previews um, at a number of organizations. Our microsite also has some of those testimonials that do a really nice job of saying, this is why I love this work and this is why this work is hard. Um, and so I would encourage you to take a look at both at our microsite and then there's a, there's a number of other realistic job preview videos and other products that folks have put out that um, are on, again, on the, the information gateway that can help you think about the languaging. I think um, New York City has done a pretty good job of some of that as well. And um, yes, I think so that's that's my my brief answer to that. I would I mean, we'll, keep, we'll we're gonna keep looking for other success stories. We're happy um, to share those out with folks um, as we find them. I see a question from Colleen about the recordings. Yes, the recordings for the whole Child Welfare Virtual Expo um, are then housed on the Cap um, Center for States website, I believe. There's a whole, all the years of the, the virtual expos are um, available. So I know that they'll send them out to folks once they're all completed. So that's your answer, Colleen. And let's see, Ms. Holly. Yes, thank you, Holly. It can be overwhelming when we start to see all of the challenges. So um, thank you for that. Great. I see a question in our Q&A about tools for partnering with human resources. And I know um, we are happy to, to provide those at a later date. And I know the, Q, uh, the Quality Improvement Center for Workforce Development has also done some work in that area. So um, I'm sure you could uh, reach out to them as well. And I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think um, unless anyone has another burning question or comment, I think what we will do is we'll close the session. We'll give you all a little bit of a break. Um, thanks Arlene for putting the QIC website in the chat. And again, programs at nickwe.org gets you to both of us. We again, will be in our booth all day. So please come and talk with us there. We're happy to have a conversation offline about all of these pieces. Um, and really just appreciate your time and attention and all of the hard work that you do. Again, I mentioned it at the beginning of the session, but if you were not at our, our worker recognition event last week, um, please take a look at that recording. It's a great celebration of all of this work um, and actually provides, I think, some really interesting um, and encouraging words for, again, thinking about how we, how we are in this profession. And so um, take a look at those testimonials, enjoy the music from that session, and um, we're always here for you. So please reach out to us and we're happy to connect. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.